Payload 3.0 is stable. A lot of you are going to be very excited about that. The most important thing is that they are now all in on Next.js, which is great news for us as Next.js developers because we get a very powerful tool, as you'll see, in our toolbox. So a lot of you have already seen Payload around, but maybe you didn't know how to get started. So in this video, I'll show you how to get started, how to understand Payload in the context of the Next.js app router, right, with server components and caching and the main features of Payload and how it all fits together. Payload is completely open source. You can check out their GitHub repo as well. It has about 27k stars right now and they list some of the benefits. So here they mentioned why you would want to use them over regular CMS and you don't have to sign up for a subscription to get started. But instead of reading all this text, let me just show you how it works in practice, right? So I want to thank Payload for sponsoring this video. Let's say we want to build a blog. So here I have my code editor and it's currently empty. I want to create a programming blog. If you already have an existing Next.js app, you can add Payload to there as well. But if you want to learn Payload, I recommend that you actually, so what we can do is we can say mpx create payload in the current directory. So I recommend that after watching this video, if you want to get started with payload, you pick the website template here. They actually have a really high quality, very nice template that shows all of the main features of payload and, and how it works in conjunction with Next.js, with server components, with caching. So it's a great starting point to learn payload. So they allow you to pick multiple databases now. I like to use SQLite during development. It's just a file in the file system. So I will go with that for this video. Yes, and after a couple seconds, our project is ready to go here. There are a couple of files here. Let's quickly get an overview of what we get here. So we have a bunch of configuration files. So you can use payload with Docker. So that is possible. However, we're not gonna use that in this video. So I will go ahead and delete these. So we get shadcn out of the box. Some of you will recognize the file name as well as Tailwind and it's all TypeScript. But let's actually run this project and, and let's see what we get in the browser. So it's just npm run dev. And then if we open up the app, we can see something here. This is their website template and I will quickly walk you through there. So anyone coming to our website right now will see this home page, right? This is a public page right now. So what do we have right now? This is actually just a Next.js application, just like how you would normally create a Next.js application. You can see we are using the app router here and we'll talk about what everything else here is. But what we just have here is just one Next.js app with some additional payload uh, files in there. That's how, that's how we can see it. Right, so with this website template, Payload has already styled and added some markup and but they give us this admin dashboard. So let's actually click and see what we get. So this admin dashboard here, the first time you go here, you can create a, an admin user. I will use my email. So I can sign up here. If I click on create, I'm now in the admin panel. So this is the admin panel and it is still part of that one Next.js app. Everything you're gonna see here is just gonna be one Next.js app. So the idea of the admin panel is that we as admi administrators, here we can deal with the content, right? So typically you're gonna use Payload as a CMS to manage content. As you'll see, Payload is actually capable of more than that, but at its core, it's about managing content. And with this website template, they have essentially set it up so that we're creating a blog type of website. Before we continue though, let's quickly talk about the, the routing here because you're gonna understand everything better if you understand that. So here we are on slash admin, right? So I'm in the admin dashboard slash admin. So from the next chance app router, we know how routing works, right? So you have the app folder and then where is that page.tsx file for admin? So here we see two folders with parentheses, so if you remember from Next.js routing, that means that it doesn't add anything to the URL. It's just for organizational purposes. But if I open the one with payload here, here we have another folder called admin. That does add something to the URL, you could say. We still do not see a page.tsx, but we do see a very scary looking segments route here. Here we finally see a page.tsx file. This is the one that we are looking at right now. Right? So this admin dashboard, is this page you could say this is all managed by payload here they do not recommend that you modify it what is this strange segment well that just means anything that comes after it so if i go to slash posts here you can see there's a bunch of things that get added to the url and we just want to have this one that pay this one page that tsx found that takes care of everything that comes after admin including admin itself so that's just what this means with next.js routing so we don't want to do anything here but just so you understand how this works it's one next.js app and the routing works just like before right so we have some other routes as by the default as well this is the public home page so if we go to front end here you'll see that there is a page that tsx file here that's going to be for the home page if i go to slash post you can see i have a posts page here but we haven't added any posts yet but where is that posts page coming from well here we have posts and 
then here I have a page of TSX. This is the page of TSX that we're looking at on slash post. What is it doing here? Well, sort of instantiating payloads. We can configure payload. We'll take a look at all of that in a second. It's getting all of the posts from our database. And we are actually using the payload variable for that. Payload in turn is using an ORM under the hood like Drizzle to actually interface with our database we get the posts here and we just have a bunch of markup here that displays the poach and we can do all of this on the server right so it's an, it's a server component we can fetch data directly in there it happens all on the server has many benefits we don't have to struggle with some rest api or graphql we can fetch data directly in the react server component here right so the payload variable here is so, sort of like an orm um if we use some intelligence here let's see what the methods are so we can find we can find something in our database by ID or just find. We can create a new one, right? So I could create something new in the post collection programmatically. Instead of creating it here in the dashboard, I can also programmatically maybe create a post if you have a use case for that. You would do, you would instantiate payload with the configuration. You would get the variable and then just use it like that. Or I can delete, update. So all your CRUD essentially can be done with the payload variable. But in this case, we just need to we just need to get data. Right, so this is what you get out of the box with this website template. And there is also some page.client that's just that's just necessary to make the theme work with use client. We can uh, ignore that for now. It's one Next.js app and all the routing works just like before. And actually, let me zoom out a little bit. So this is what we have right now. So that is the routing, right? So in Next.js, we have the app folder for routing, but there are many other things that payload here gives us when you do when you install the website template. We'll take a look at these other things throughout the video, but very quickly, we also get an access folder because if we're gonna create a post in that admin dashboard, right? If I go back to the dashboard here, you'll see that we can create a post. I'll show that in a second. And we can decide who can who can view it, who can change it. There are blocks, so we can also create pages with payload. Those pages, well, we want to display things on the page. We can take these blocks and put them on a page in a particular layout. That's what blocks are for. We have collections. This is essentially how all the data is structured in payload. So for a post, for example, if we take a look at posts here, here we see a post collection and here we have some access control here we can see they have a field so each post has a title must must have a title they have some content with an editor there are components just react components that are used throughout the entire app so for example this admin bar that you see here that's what you see here at the top uh, using shatian the familiar ui folder it has some endpoints here but it's just using that to see it. we'll talk about that it has a fields folder where it actually has the lexical editor that we can customize the footer and header is is what you see here so you can see there's a header here at the bottom there's not enough content here so the so you can see the footer here my computer is in dark mode uh, yours may be in light mode but there's not enough content yet so the footer is creeping up a little bit here but it will be pushed down as we add content there is a folder for all the hero sections so they have different layouts depending on which one you pick and then these other folders are not really important for now basically uh, the context api here they're using the theme and by the way since i started my app it automatically creates the database the sqlite folder here and i can not view it but th this is where my data of the whole app will be and what we also have here is the payload config file so this is where we can configure payload we'll talk a little bit about this as well uh, but for example here we can decide which editor to use connecting to a particular database our data right in the collections so that is essentially all of the folders and files that we get here but we want to build a programming block so i'm going to go to my dashboard here and a blog post well that that's a piece of data and in this setup the creators have already created a post collection so we we can just use that there are no posts yet so i can create a post so i'm going to write my first blog post here i can give it a title of js tips from a senior developer this is the editor view in payload give it a title here i have content and then here i have some tabs and all of this is completely configurable and right? so all of the fields here where how does payload know what to display here well this has been set up for us but if you want to know how this works we have collections here and for posts we have the we have this file. It also has hooks. That's why it's in a separate folder, but they are all separate pieces of data essentially. So here for, for the posts uh, collection, we can see for fields here, it should have a title, okay? And it's a text field, okay? So then payload knows, okay, so there should be a title uh, field here, okay? And then we have tabs, right? So then we have three tabs here. So the first tab is the actual content of the post. Right, so here you can see in the array for the tabs, the first one here is content. And what type of input is this? Well, it's a rich text input. And here we can specify 
the editor. So it's a lexical ed so it's a lexical editor and we can customize it. So, so all of the things you see here, I can change. And my best JS tips, I want this one to be an H1. So I make it a heading one and I can write text. Right? Very slick editor. I can do forward slash and pick something else h2 and what's really cool is here i can also view a live preview so there are two preview options here i can click on preview it'll actually open it up in a new tab and show it like this on in the actual website but if we don't want to leave the editor dashboard i can also click on live preview and we get this very slick preview here right here as we edit and this is live so if i change the title you can see when i remove here so if i change this so if i change the heading here you can see it's actually changing this as I type. Pretty good, pretty slick. Since the title is actually already in H1, I don't want this one. I can already delete that. Okay, let me close this so we can take a look at these other options we have. So you can completely customize everything you see here, including the editor. For example, when I highlight here, you will see that there's like a, an inline toolbar here. If we find this a little bit distracting, we can actually just uh, comment this out, for example. So if I save here, and now when I highlight here, you can see it doesn't pop up anymore, right? So I can completely customize everything I see here. You can see this editor has a number of blocks, blocks that we can add. So an image, a banner, but also codes here. So of course, in a programming block, we would like to add code. So you can see I have that option here. Here is the code block. And it's really nice because as I type here, you can see we get syntax highlighting out of the box, right? So really nice, very slick. Where is this code block coming from? Well, these blocks, basically these are entities that you put on a page. So if you create a new page or a new blog, you can put things on there. In this case, we can do it directly in the editor and we allow these three blocks to be added there. They are defined in here. So here we have code. Here we have the code block. It also has field. So we can pick the language, the options, right? That's why we see these options here, right? So it's all very logical. It all makes sense. You just have to uh, un see it once and understand how it all fits together. So we're still looking at the posts collection, right? So the post collection under the tabs here, the first one was content. Right? So let's say I'm satisfied with the content. Now we have meta. So that is also defined here, meta. And actually it's this one because it has a label of meta and under here we have two fields we can we can we can pick related posts and we can pick the category right so here you can see related posts and categories it automatically renders this on the page for us we also have seo features here and again you can see that's and that's coming from here label seo and we can define what we want to give the editor access to right here so before i publish i quickly want to preview so this is our page right now and it looks a bit boring without images so i want to add an image i can do it directly here with another block a media block or i can go to the collection media so there is also a way to manage all of the media here so here i can add images i can upload them one by one or i can do bulk upload here and do a bunch of them at the same time i can actually click and drag and then here i can just go through them and let me quickly add an alt to the other ones as well so now i have my images here i can manage my media assets separately separately from everything else and really nice like a media browser now i can go back to my posts which is automatically saved for me in draft mode and now i can come back here and add a media block and i can choose from existing it will automatically open up my media browser let's say i like this one i can decide the position let's make it full screen and now i want to see this and now i have a nice image on the page all right i'm happy with the post i'm going to publish the changes and now it's going to be publicly visible for anyone going to our website but where is it i don't see the post here we, st we still see this default home page markup well it's under slash posts and how is this page able to do that well that page has already been created here in the app router here under posts page you can see we are fetching the data from the from our database here not through some third-party api this is directly using an orm like drizzle to directly interface with our database so you can see it's getting all of the posts we can have some customization for that but ultimately we're going to get those posts and then it's just rendered in the output here we go to the individual blog post so actually it has no image here so i can go into seo and add a meta image here let's preview now if we go back you can see we have a nice image here okay if i click on it i go to the individual blog page has a nice hero image here automatically which page the tsx is a resp res is responsible for this well it's under posts and then it has it's a dynamic route so if it's going to be this one with blog posts it's typically called a slug and then this is the one page here what is it doing here it's getting params right so it needs to know which post to get from the database right because we could have many different ones so it needs to know which one which slug is in the url so it needs to grab data from the url when we load the page it's going to grab this slug from the url it's called params here as a prop since next.js 15 this is a it is asynchronous so we have to do await we grab the slug here and then here it's using a utility function that's defined here at the bottom to actually go into our database here you can see it's instantiating payload again but it's going into our database here finding in the collection of posts 
finding the one where that slug is that slug. The nice thing about this template is it's quite realistic. So for example, this utility function, we may wanna use this in other places, in other components as well. So if you use it in multiple components on the same page, when somebody goes to this page, you may be worried that you are accidentally going to make a bunch of database calls for the same post. But the payload team has added this cache function from React around this function. So this will only run once during a render pass. So you're not necessarily making too many database calls. So that's really nice. I'll talk, we'll talk more about caching in next chance in a second. Um, so it's getting the post and then it has a bunch of markup here. You can see there is a default post hero, right? So here, the hero section that we see with a nice image here and the overall layout here, that's also coming from some folder here. Here we have a folder dedicated to heroes. So there is there are some generics, generic ones, right? high impact, medium impact, but also one specifically for post heroes, right? So here we have one for post heroes and you can see there's just a bunch of markup. And again, if you don't like something, right? If I, if I don't like something and I make it uh, 30, 30 point four RAM, you can see it's actually shifting up, right? So I'm, I'm, I can change the post hero right here. I can, I can customize anything I want. All right. And then I just uh, displays the rest of the, of the information, the markup, including our code snippet right here at the bottom, right? So collections are really important because this is the, this is our data and most important part of an app. These are in, so in this website template, they give you these collections, but we can add more, right? So maybe we do want to add a custom one for our, for all our code snippets. Maybe we want to manage this separately from anything else, right? So you would uh, create a collection uh, like this, and uh, you can define who should get access to these code snippets, right? In terms of who can view them, but also update them and all the fields, etc. Right? so just like uh, categories, for example, and once you have a collect, once you've created one, you can add it here in the payload config to this array of collections that we have. And then in the admin dashboard, you will see them here under collections where you can then start editing them. So here, the, the post that we just created um, is in the published status now. It actually also exposes this as an API automatically for you. So in case you have some use case for that, that's really nice as well. Now I typed in a slash posts, but if I go to the homepage, how would somebody know that they can go there, right? So we want to add a proper link to that page. So typically we want to add links in the header and or the footer. So what I could do, I could go to the header and footer that are already created here and I could open their component files. And here you can see it's mapping over nav items and adding a link. I could add the link here, but we can also do this from the dashboard. In fact, if you can do it in the dashboard, you probably want to do it here. So here under header, I can add a nav item. Where do we want to go? Well, we actually don't see it as an option slash posts because slash post is created, you could say, uh, manually in here. So we have just like how you would do it traditionally in the Next.js app, right? So um, if you want to create an about page, you would create an about folder in here and then uh, page.tsx, right? If you do it this way, um, it's not going to be picked up like that by payload, right? So typically, if you're going to create a custom page, we'll talk about it in a second, we can do that here as well. But slash posts has been created like that. Right, just how you would do it traditionally. And that's, that's okay, we can still pick a custom URL for slash posts and we can label that as simply posts. Now if I save here and I refresh the homepage here, you can see we have posts here. If I click on that, I have linked to my posts route, right? So this is a page in payload, right? And we can create pages. Well, traditionally in the Next.js app, what you would do if you create an about page here in the app router somewhere, you would create about and then page.tsx and then you just export a page component, right? So I can still do it manually like this. In fact, let's actually try that, right? So if I just create an about page like this, well, now if we go to slash about, right, slash about, remember everything is still one next chance app. If I go to slash about, you can see, I actually see about here because that is what I'm displaying here, right? So I could technically still do it like this. Um, actually, I just, I just deleted it and you can see we have a nice 404 page out of the box as well, but if you have editors on your team that should be able to create new pages or marketers, they can very easily do this from the payload dashboard itself. So just like post is a piece of data and a media item can be a piece of data, a page in payload can also be a piece of data, right? So that is why we see pages here as well. So we want to create a page, maybe an about page, or maybe even better, a contact page, because we want people to contact us because maybe we're looking for work, right? So we can say contact and the goal of this blog is perhaps to get work, right? So here we can say something, all right, let's say I want a heading here and then we can say something like, please contact, oh, maybe not please, maybe that's too desperate. Contact me through this form. All right, let's see, preview, contact me through this form, okay? 
that's the very simple hero section and then below there we have the actual content on the page so here we have the concept of layout and this is where we see those blocks again so if i click on add layout here we see the blocks blocks that we can add to a page right so before in a block when we're creating the blog post you could do it directly in the editor itself as we were creating the blog content but if you create a custom page, you're also working with these blocks. So this is essentially just an item that you're adding on a page. So content is a common one, media block if you want to have an image, uh, form if you want to add a form. Let's have a little bit of content here. So this content block is very common and this works with columns, right? So here I can add a column and it's actually, they have some nice layouts here out of the box. So you can have one column take up a third of the width and then the other one two thirds i'm currently open for consulting work right i'm just gonna add a little bit more content here too, so we can see how the layout here works so this is going to take up a third and then this one is maybe taking up two thirds available from january i'm just gonna i'm just gonna copy and paste a bunch of times so we can see the layout better right this one takes up a third this one takes up two thirds if i want to see it i can click on live preview here but this one would be better to book this so we can see the full width right so nice layouts here out of the box this is one block okay and now below here we want to have the actual form we have layouts here we have the content here now i want to add another block right so here we would have the form block and again all of these blocks are just defined in here right so here the form block i'm going to use right now you have a bunch of individual components here and there's some configuration for that again you can open up these files it all makes logical sense uh, now here we can pick a form but we haven't created a form itself yet so here in the collections we should create a form first so there can be many there can be different types of forms right uh, this is going to be a contact form contact form should the user be able to submit to us well a message right let's just use text area for that um we can say this is the actual uh, message right the label for that should show your message and it is required right so we can nicely add some validation here they're actually using react hook form in this template i think that's really cool as well so you, you get a really cutting edge setup here out of the box so then here we also can pick the uh, email field because the, this the, this user is going to submit the a message to us we want to respond to them so we need to know their email right so we can say email right so we can just say email and here we can say your email this one is also required the submit button we can say submit message and then if it succeeds we can say i will respond as quickly as possible all right so then i uh, will talk about this option in a second i'm just going to create this as a form it's basically just uh, one form now in our collection of forms now i can go back to our page that we were creating this contact page where we have the form block now i can pick the right form we just have one okay let's actually see check this out all right so here we have our page and then here at the bottom we have a very nice form love your site are you available for work john and let's actually say that I forget my email here. You can see we get nice validation out of the box. Also, if I leave it empty, you can see it doesn't allow me to submit this, right? Using React Hook form. If I try submitting something for one of my projects, right? This is John at Gmail submitting here. Now I can click on submit message and we see a nice success message here. So somebody submitted a message on our website. Where can we view the submissions? Well, it's very handy right here in the form submissions we can see we have one entry here and we can see that somebody submitted this message right pretty slick now we need to make sure that contact is also here as a available here as a link so now if we go to uh, header again and we want to have another nav item here this one is going to link to contact you can see now we actually do see the page here because we created the page here internally in the payload dashboard if you would create it sort of manually here in the app router right so again what you could do is just you, you could do it the traditional way right contact and you could code it up all yourself all by yourself if you do it like that um, you can still do it with custom url so it's not a big deal but uh, it works slightly different right so here the label would be simply contact okay save now if i refresh here you can see contact is right here right contact me through this page all right now we can take it even further with this contact form if i go to the form here where we configured that form right where we set up the input fields there is a very nice option here where if somebody submits a message here on a website we can immediately send it to our own email i can add an email here and let's say it should send it to my email and what should the email say well yeah you received an 
message. This message was on the website. So here I want the data that the user uh, added here to the form. Now I can actually use the name of the input fields that we configured there with double square, with double curly brackets, or I can use the wildcard for all the data. Now if I save here, I still need to set up email. So I'm going to use NoteMailer here, but they also have uh, other options, uh, recent, but I can go to payload config here to set up email. Right, so here at the bottom, I can say email. Here we can use the payload note mailer adapter. So payload allows us to use note mailer. And I got this snippet from here where they show you how to set up a note mailer. I need to install these packages, npm install, just these packages. And I will manually copy these import statements. My auto import isn't working. Uh, we can change this. But the most important part here is setting up our email here. So SMTP host is actually just, uh, I'm using Gmail here. I created a uh, Gmail account, so I can just use that. For the user in my environment variables, I just um, used some email address that I created. So that's just your email. And for the password in Google, you need to set up some app password. And then that's the password I'm using. I can't show you here, but that's what I did. Let's go back to our contact page and let's see. Let's fill out this form one more time. I'd love to hire. I'd love to hire you. John at gmail.com is going to submit this message from our website. Now let's go back to my email inbox. And actually I'm getting this email. I just created a fake email account, but I get the content of the form. Uh, email john at gmail.com with message. Amazing site. I'd love to hire you. So now I can reply to john at gmail.com. And how slick is that? All with just a couple of clicks here in the payload dashboard. Really powerful, right? So uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, we could add some more. We should tweak this a little bit more, right? On the public side of things, we don't want to have the payload logo. We want to have our own logo. So again, everything is customizable. So here they already have a logo out of the box. I could create my own components. I can change this one. In fact, I only have to change the source here. Since it's just an XJS app, we can actually just also drop in an image here in the public folder and then we can reference that by just using slash programmer blog logo dot png and if i do this you can see we now have our own logo but of course we would also like to customize the home page for example well the home page if we take a look at the app router how is that structured so that is actually this first page.tsx file here but it's using a, a page template here so uh, we can customize in a couple of ways we can simply well ex export uh, a different component from here Right, and really code it up ourselves. Or let's take a look. So this is coming from the slug folder here. So this is basically catching all the other uh, pages that we create. For example, the contact page match is not matching with any of the other ones, right? So the contact page, and they're using a slug here. This is not a slug as in a post block slug. This is just a generic name for all the other pages. So for example, for the uh, contact page, that would be uh, the slug here. It's and that's how they are rendering these pages that you create in the dashboard, for example. Right? So if I go to slash contact, it's not matching with anything else here. So it's going to go with this one. It's going to get the params, basically contact in that case, from the URL. And that's going to take, it's going to find that page from our database because it's just a piece of data, just like anything else. And then it's going to render that page here. We specify the hero and then the blocks, right? That's how every page is structured by default. A hero section and below there you have a bunch of blocks. Now for the homepage to have something special here, which is to have some default static standard one. If we already have some data, we can actually comment this out. So if I just comment this out and now I go back to my homepage, it's actually not going to find anything so we can create our own home page actually i can do it from the dashboard so here i'm going to create a new page i will just call that home i don't want to have i don't want to necessarily have a hero image here or a hero section i'm just going to use a heading one welcome to my blog i'm going to publish this and actually you can see we have some built validation here so you do need to add some uh, content here or something else. So here I can just quickly add a column here that will take all the width. Check out my post. We can make this a link, uh, an internal link. And we will say slash posts. Cool. I'm going to publish here. Now if I refresh, you can see we have a custom home page. And if I click on slash post, we go to our post page. All right. So now it's starting to come together a little bit more. And you can see hopefully how powerful it is and how customizable everything is. So a page just like anything else is also a collection here, right? This is all your data, the most important part, right? And all of these pieces of data, they have uh, those fields that we talked about, right? All of the fields, the properties, essentially, and uh, the access control, right? So we can create uh, other users if we want. The first time you go to the admin panel, it will, you, you're sort of creating the first admin user, but I can create new ones if I want. I can 
uh, customize those users further but then i can go to my posts and i can decide who can view them right so you can use access control when you set up a collection what this what this means is that you can read a post if you are authenticated so you're logged in or the post is published so you're not authenticated but it's published not draft mode and that is defined here so here basically they're wrapping an incoming request and we can check if there's user right logged in or the status of the post is published so not the draft mode anymore for all the other crud options it's only possible if the user is authenticated in a real world setting what we also want is that these posts or these pages are cached right so this data is not changing super often so if we can we want to be pretty aggressive with caching so next chance caching is a complex topic uh, but as you'll see in this template they actually have uh, put in a lot of effort into this they even got the caching very well so so a page like this should be statically rendered so what it means is during a build it will create the html of this page and we can double check that by simply running a build so i can run npm run build or these days we also have this static and dynamic indicator since next.js 15 in the corner at the time of recording that one is actually it seems a bit buggy uh, it's a Next.js issue, not a payload, but uh, yeah, if you really want to know it for sure, right now we still have to run a build. You can see it's generating static pages. All right, so then here we get an output here, a list of the pages on a, of our entire app that are static and dynamic. If we can, we want a page to be static. That means during this build, it, it can already create the HTML of that page. All right, so this is the page for this uh, post, individual post component. So this is the component for the individual po post page we can already render this into html once during the build and then just serve that over and over when people go here so then we don't have to render this component when somebody comes right? because the html is already ready to go that's what we want that's a static route so you can see here if it's an empty circle it's static right so home page is static uh, slash slash posts is static now you can see that some of these pages for example the individual uh, blog post that we created that's a then since that is using the square brackets here by default actually it's going to be a dynamic rendered route because Next.js doesn't know all the infinite possible URLs that we could have so it cannot generate HTML for an infinite amount so by default actually that's dynamically rendered but because the payload team is using the uh, generate static params function this is still gonna be static now right so you can see using generate static params that's how you can make that's how you typically would make those types of pages still static so that's still working everything else is dynamic but that's kind of expected or not really important here right so here we have that function it's in the same file as the page component and so here for the post page i have this post component here we want to render this during the build to html but it needs to know for which uh, slug right so so that's why we're getting all of the posts from the database and we're just going to take all of their slugs it's going to be a big array of slug that's what we are returning here so then it's going to take each one of the array and run this component with that param so it will have a bunch of html files for each of the slugs in our database so that's how we can make a page static now what happens when we change a blog post maybe i go to my posts here and here i want to change something about my post all right maybe i want to make this uh, humble from a humble developer so i'm just changing the title here now i'm going to publish the changes but remember this page was was static it was already created during a build so how do we make sure that this is actually updated so here you get into the issue of invalidating the cache and this actually has a really nice developer experience so here where you define the, your data your posts if i go here under fields uh, we have some hooks here so here they actually give you a really nice developer experience for managing the uh, well you could say the life cycle this piece of data which is posted in this case so here after a change we can run a function so we are running a function called we found post here what did the payload team do in there um, it's in hooks here that's why posts here is in a separate uh, folder because here they have some functions they don't they do not have it for categories of media here but one of these is this one and in this function what we are doing what you're going to get when you hook into one of those events you're going to get the uh, doc so basically the uh, piece of data essentially the new one previous one as well so if the post status is published um we want to uh, put together the url of that one we log something but then here we call the revalidate path function from next.js so when you do that you so you're using it from next cache when you call that function 
Next.js will clear the caches for that particular URL. So only that particular blog post would then change. So then if somebody goes here again, well, in this case, it will be a different title, right? So the title, the slug here, the slug would also be different, but they would see the updated version of that post, right? Because we're using a revalidated path. This is all standard Next.js. Um, you can see Payload is nicely integrating now with the latest Next.js. It's coming together very nicely and we could do so many other things here, but we, we just simply don't have the time to discuss everything here. But I think this is enough to get started. So if you really want to get started with Payload right now, I highly recommend that you start with this website template because it's really easy to learn Payload if you just go through the files and see how it all fits together. You can just run MPX create payload app and then the latest one. And if you want to install it in the current directory and you add a period, that's how I got all of this. Now, at some point you'll want to push it to production. You can host it since it's just a Next.js app. You can just host it just like any other Next.js app, right? So we can host it on for sale, serverless. Payload itself has some options for you in terms of deployment. Uh, you can also host it with Docker like we saw at the beginning. So super powerful. And I'm really glad that they're all in on Next.js. I think they have a really good chance of becoming a default backend framework to have in Next.js because it's not just CMS anymore. If you go to the documentation, you can see they have a bunch of other things here as well, like a jobs queue even, right? So we're only scratching the surface in this video. There is much more to explore. So I highly recommend you also check out their documentation to see everything that's possible. And soon they'll even have a visual editor allowing you to directly edit on the page itself. So not just in the admin panel, but directly on the page, changing and tweaking things. That's going to be really exciting to see. And again, it's all open source. So make sure you check out their GitHub as well. I will link to that in the description as well make sure to give them a star and one final thing i want to mention here is you can also seed the database here so i added my own blog post here but you can also just allow payload to just quickly add some data here you just have to click it and in a couple seconds it will add all the data all right so now if i go back to my uh, project here you can see under posts now i have other posts they just have some standard posts here and you can see really slick hero image with all the content here under posts you can see how they structure it here in the admin dashboard all the bells and whistles that you would expect from managing content it's all in there so i would say check out payload and again if you want to try it out right now in your own code editor i highly recommend you run this command and pick the website template so you can get started with a very slick out of the box template that shows you how everything fits together right so i want to thank payload for sponsoring this video really excited to see how far they can take it and i really think they have a good chance of becoming a a default part of the next.js stack and let me know what you think in any case thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next one